Good morning, everyone. Just a few announcements before we begin our worship service. Special welcome to our visitors today. It's good to have you here. Um, we have a potluck Sunday, so uh, if you're visiting, we would be thrilled to have you stay with us and eat, and uh, always lots of food. Charlie, do you like potlucks? <laughs> okay. Uh, special prayers are sought for uh, Ed and Diane for their grandson, Walker. Uh, he's in a, a tough situation with his health right now. I think there's still more diagnosis coming. But uh, their, Ed and Diane's daughter, Marilee, is the mother to Walker. And uh, especially pray for Marilee as well. She's expecting in June. And she's got a very sick little boy on her hands as well. <clears throat> Hudson, whose birthdays are we celebrating today? Kelly and Heidi. <laughs> there may be others, so happy birthday to you. We turn the service over to Scott. Would you stand as we begin our worship together this morning? Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. Come. Let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our maker. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our maker. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture. And the sheep of his hand and the sheep of his hand for he is our god and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand and the sheep of his hand. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. 
Be with me, Lord, I cannot live without thee. I dare not try to take one step alone. I cannot bear the loads of life unaided. I need thy strength to lean myself upon. Be with me, Lord, and then if dangers threaten, if storms of trial, you'll burst above my head. If lashing seas leap everywhere about me, they cannot harm or make my heart afraid. Be with me, Lord, no other gift or blessing thou couldst bestow could with this one compare. A constant sense of thy abiding presence where'er I am to feel that thou art near. Be with me, Lord, Good morning, church. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you, Father, for bringing us here together on this first day of the week. And thank you, Lord, for Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for everything that is good. We, we bring before you, Father, Ed's and Diane's grandson, Walker, and we just pray for healing for him, Father. And we just pray that the doctors and his medical team will do what's best, Father, and give them the strength to do what's best and that he may get better, Father. Just pray for healing for him. We pray that you'll be with the parents and grandparents in a special way and just guide them and give them comfort, Lord, at this time. Pray your blessing on uh, everything we do today. We pray your blessing on John as he brings us the message from your word and just be with him as he speaks. Thank you, Lord, for our elders and deacons and the work that they do and our teachers and just give them the strength, Lord, and comfort them. And we thank you, Lord, for Jesus and our eternal, the hope of eternal life you've given us through him. And just bless our day today, Lord, and help us to put you first in everything we do. And thank you, Lord, for being our Lord and Savior. And thank you for watching over us and just guide us in your way. In his name we pray. Amen. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only Son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of 
searing loss. The Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one. Bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that left him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything. No gifts, no power, no wisdom. But I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, with this last, or with this past weekend being Easter and it being the most important celebration that we have as Christians, I wanted to highlight what was accomplished 2,000 years ago. I'd like to read a passage from Hebrews 10, specifically verses 19 to 23. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unservingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful." When we partake in the bread and cup, I hope this passage demonstrates that we are remembering our sins have been paid for, but that because we are now made clean again, we have access to a relationship with God directly. <clears throat> if you bow with me, I'll pray for the cup. Dear God, we thank you for the, uh, the significance that uh, the fruit of the vine represents with Jesus' blood being split, spilt for us. We thank you that because of that blood being spilled, we, we are now made clean again, and we are now redeemed in your eyes, and we are able to develop a relationship with you directly and not have a, a middleman between us. God, we just pray that the, the significance of this, of this cup is, is not, not wasted in this time. Amen.
I'll pray for the bread now. Dear God, we thank you for the um, what the bread means to us. We thank you for the the sacrifice that was made of Jesus's body that that hung up on that cross and and was buried in a tomb and 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 beat death and, and walked out three days later. We thank you for the sacrifice that was made for us and and again we just pray that the significance of what this bread means isn't lost on us in this time uh and we again we, we thank you for the the willingness that jesus took to the cross to to be or to sit in that place for us for the punishment that we deserved amen Knock and the door shall be opened unto you, singing Allelu, Alleluia. Ask and it shall be given unto you, seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you, singing Allelu, Alleluia. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that Proceeds from the mouth of God, singing Alleluia. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, singing Alleluia, Alleluia. <clears throat> Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee. And hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Crown him the Lord of life, who triumphed o'er the grave. 
who rose victorious in the strife for those he came to save. His glories now we sing, who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. Crown him the Lord of peace, whose power a scepter sways. Pull to pull that wars may cease, absorbed in prayer and praise. His reign shall know no end, and round his pierced feet, fair flowers of peril, Dice extend their fragrance ever sweet. Crown him the Lord of heaven, one with the Father known, and the blessed Spirit through him given from yonder glorious throne. All hail, Redeemer, hail, for thou hast died for me, <clears throat> and glory shall not fail throughout eternity. You can be seated. reading this morning comes from Psalms 34, 15 to 22. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all their, his bones, not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked, the foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants, no one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Would the children come and join me for a song? All right. We're going to thank the Lord for some things that he's given us. And, uh, and I'm going to ask you for suggestions after we do one verse, then you'll give me some suggestions for the next verses. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful day. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful day. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful day. Right where we are, sing hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Right where we are. What else are we thanking the Lord for today? Thank you, Lord, for giving us food. Thank you, Lord, for giving us food. Thank you, Lord, for giving us food right where we are. Sing hallelujah, praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Right where we are. Thank you, Lord, for... <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for giving us Wi-Fi. Thank you, Lord, for giving us Wi-Fi. Thank you, Lord, for giving us Wi-Fi right where we are. Sing hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Right where we are. That's a good one because people are joining us from uh, home who wouldn't be able to do that if we did not have Wi-Fi. Good point. Something else. Thank you, Lord, for mom and dad. Let's do that one, okay? Thank you, Lord, for mom and dad. Thank you, Lord, for mom and dad. Thank you, Lord, for mom and dad. Right where we are, sing hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Right where we are. There you go. Now we know what he's really thankful for. That got him clapping. So <laughs> That's good. Okay, can we do one more? Okay. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ. Right where we are, sing hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Right where we are. Probably hard to clap with those cuffs on our jacket, eh? Anyways, good job. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Weyburn. Maybe you already live here, but... Uh, you know, last, last weekend I was in Carmen, Manitoba, a good time with the, the church uh, in, in Carmen, and, uh, and actually with members from uh, Winnipeg and several other places around, uh, even some people from here were there, <laughs> and it was, uh, it was good. Um, it was uh, really good. And whenever anybody came into the building, uh, I went and, and met them, and I said, welcome to Carmen. Uh, even though I, d I don't live there, uh, it was just good to, to be there like it is to be here. Uh, it's just good to be together, to worship and to uh, gather in the presence of our Savior and to seek the Lord together. Uh, I'm glad we finished our song with the verse about uh, thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ. Uh, he's the reason why we're here, and I'm glad we had uh, the time around the table that we did to remember what Jesus means to us, especially uh, in his uh, death on the cross and uh, his resurrection to give us the hope of everlasting life. This morning I want us to think about the Lord who sees and hears us. The Lord who sees and hears us us. We seek the Lord to offer him worship for the same reason that people have done so for thousands of years. King David, 3,000 years ago, sought the Lord to worship him and to be in his presence. Today we're going to look at a psalm that has to do with, uh, that David wrote, that has to do with the presence of the Lord and what that means. We are 
mortal creatures seeking answers to the questions and challenges of life in human flesh. We have questions and we have challenges about our human life. And we seek the answers and the help that we need to face those by coming to our Creator. That's why we're here. We seek the Lord who created us because like David and all worshipers who've gone before us, we need to know that our divine Creator sees us and hears us when we cry out to Him. Of course, we know that nothing really escapes the eyes and ears of an all-knowing and an omnipresent God. Proverbs 15.3, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. He sees the deeds that are done. He hears every spoken word. He even hears every unspoken word that remains silent as thought in the human mind. God knows all of that, and He's aware of all of that. But we, we gather for worship. We turn our worshipful attention to Him with purpose. We sing hymns like, Be with me, Lord, like we did this morning. Because we want to give Him our attention. He's been with us everywhere that we've, we've lived this past week. He's been everywhere. He knows everything that has been said and everything that we've done. But now we want to kind of push all of those things to the side and, and turn our eyes towards Him. Because we trust that He is seeing us and that His ears will hear us, that His arms will embrace us, and that we will re receive strength and blessing from Him despite, despite what He often sees and hears from us in our shortcomings and transgressions. We know all too well where we've been <laughs> and uh, some of the things that have happened with us over the years or maybe even over the last few days, things that we've struggled with or things that we've messed up or things that we don't understand. God is fully aware of all those things. Those are things that are all in His hand. We may not have been aware of His presence while they were happening. We may have not in, in the heat of an emotional moment or a, a busy day acknowledged that He was there and, and, and saw His hand in what was happening. But today, this morning, we have come with our worshipful attention to answer our questions about our life and the challenges with which we wrestle. In faith, we trust that He seeks us out to redeem and sanctify us, not to punish and destroy. I love that, that it's part of our worship every time we gather on the Lord's Day to take the elements of the, the bread and the fruit of the vine because it reminds us that God's intention in reaching out to us is to redeem us, to cleanse us, to forgive us, to sanctify us, to make us holy, to make us His. He gave that sacrifice on the cross in order to accomplish that. 
And so as we, we come into his presence, and, and, and I love that we, we read from, from Hebrews, as we come into his presence, we don't, we don't come in now worried what he's going to do to us, you know, or come in, you know, uh, with our, our feet dragging and our, our eyes down and, and thinking, you know, that now we've got to, now we've got to be ashamed in the presence of God. No. <laughs> because of the, the body and blood of Jesus Christ given for us on the cross, we can come into God's presence with rejoicing. And we can seek and we can ask and we can receive. For the eyes of the Lord range through the entire earth to strengthen those whose heart is true to him. That's 2 Chronicles 16 and verse 9. Yes, the eyes of God are, are everywhere. He sees everything. He hears everything. But not because he's looking to bring punishment. That's not his purpose. His purpose is to find us, to find those who are seeking him, to find hearts that are true so that he might strengthen us and that he might redeem us. So we come in humility with confession on our lips and repentance in our hearts. We sing and pray that he will find our hearts to be true. So David, 3,000 years ago, wrote this psalm, Psalm 34, which we're going to look at today. It's one of his 22-verse acrostic poems that he wrote in Hebrew. It's, it's got 22 verses in it. And each verse in the Hebrew language begins with a letter in sequence of the Hebrew alphabet. They only have 22 letters. We, we have more than that. But they had 22 letters. And there are a number of the Psalms that were written this way. Psalms 34 is one of them. Here's the two verses that especially jumped out at me and gave rise to this morning's lesson. Verse 15 and verse 18. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. I guess it's verse 17. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. We know that some burdens of the flesh we know what some burdens of the flesh were that David carried as he came to worship the Lord. As he came to worship the Lord who sees and hears everything. David was a powerful and wealthy king that was both, like at the same time, incredibly popular with his subjects but hatefully attacked by his enemies. At the, at the same time, he, he, he was very popular and he was very much feared and engaged in battle with, with enemies. He was a skilled warrior and a great commander of men skilled at bloodshed. And I wonder how much that was on his heart when he came to worship God. He was a musician who sang, he played instruments, and he composed many songs, many which became the foundational worship hymns for both Jewish and later Christian believers. He was a married man. But his heart was divided by too many wives and mistresses. His adulterous and murderous affair with Bathsheba is as legendary as it 
is horrific for the moral failure that he committed. All of that would be on his heart as he comes to worship God. He fathered many children, including some sons that fought to the death to try and inherit his kingship. His heart was broken with family tragedy and personal shame for sins he committed. David lived a life of great peaks and valleys. And as he journeyed those peaks and valleys, time after time, he came before the Lord to worship because he knew that the Lord was the God who sees and who hears, who hears his voice and who sees him and everything that happens in his life. In six verses from Psalm 34, we will learn from the heart and words of David to express our hopeful trust in the Lord who hears and sees us this morning. So I direct your attention to Psalm 34, verses 4, 5, 6, 18, and 19. That only adds up to 5. And verse 22. There you go. Those are the six verses we'll look at this morning. I'm so good at math. <clears throat> verse 4 says this. And, well, I want you to use this sheet before we read the verses. I want you to use these sheet, this sheet. And in the first window it says, the first window that has questions, it says, who or what am I most afraid of losing? I want you to think about that. In your life, who or what are you most afraid of losing? What do I see as my greatest failure? You can, you can write on there, but if you, you don't want to write on there, you don't have to. But I do want you to think about that and have something in mind. So we're going to follow David's lead, and we're going to pray about these things. What in my life is out of control that I wish I could change? Does it ever bother you that something that you want to control is not in your control? Do you have some of those things in your life? Verse 4 says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Let's just quietly pray for a moment about the things that are on your list. O oh Lord, deliver me from the fear of losing people and things in this world. O oh Lord, deliver me from the fear of failure. O oh Lord, deliver me from the fear of not being in control. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In the next window, I've asked the question, what about myself do I feel ashamed of? Do I feel most ashamed of? Or maybe uh, it's your family that that you feel ashamed of or your background that you feel ashamed of or maybe it is just something about yourself maybe you don't like the way you look or maybe you don't you you feel like you don't have any abilities what about yourself or your family or background 
do you feel most ashamed of? Verse 5 from this psalm, David writes this, Look to him and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. Again, let's just quietly pray for the things you may have thought of. O Lord, remove my shame of who I am. Help me to see myself in, with your eyes, to see in me what you see, and to be gratefully content. Remove any shame I feel about my family or where I came from. Remove the shame of my past and present, my mistakes, and my misfortunes. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In the next window, I ask, what trouble am I having because, something, because of something I said or did? Have, have you ever gotten yourself into trouble? Um, like, pretty much every day? <laughs> Maybe that's just me. Uh, am I suffering any consequences of a bad decision? If you're suffering the consequences of a bad decision, write that down there and think about that. Uh, am I being attacked by someone because of something that happened between us? Maybe something that I did or said. Is any of that happening to you? Verse 6, the psalmist says this, This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. Let's go to our Lord in prayer again. O Lord, rescue me from troubles brought on by things I've said and done. Rescue me from bad decisions I have made. Rescue me from being a victim of another person's words, and actions. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. The next window says, my heart is breaking because. You know, we we live a life of heartbreaks. It seems that people we love uh, either break a relationship with us or are passing away. Those seem to be the toughest ones. But sometimes there's other things that are just heartbreaking things that we work so hard to achieve or to attain and then they slip through our fingers and come to nothing. Those things are heartbreaking. And they're tough. But in verse 18, the psalmist says this, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Let's pray. O oh Lord, heal my heart that is broken from loss of life, love, or relationship. Gently restore my confidence and restore my joy as you lift from me my heavy burden of sorrow. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 
My greatest affliction of body or mind is what? What afflictions do you suffer from? Do you have disease or disability? Uh, deterioration because of age? Or are you a target of attack and ridicule from people, from someone? Do you have any afflictions? In verse 19, the psalmist says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. So let's, let's pray to the God who sees and hears. O Lord, strengthen me to endure and overcome my diseases, disability, and deterioration. Protect me from any kind of attack or ridicule. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And then in the last window, I need to confess and repent of As we gather before God and as we have emphasized, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all our sins. We rejoice in that. We take joy in that. At the same time, though, it's important for us to recognize where we still need to change, where there are things that we need to bring to the Lord to help us Make that change. What do you need to confess? What do you need to repent of? What needs to be different in your life? The psalmist says in verse 22, The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Let's pray again. O oh Lord, forgive and redeem me for my many sins, my disobedience, and my unbelief. And thank you for the salvation that you provide me through my Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Perhaps you don't identify very well with King David. Uh, I get that. Perhaps you can identify more with the plight of a young slave girl by the name of Hagar, and the things that she suffered. Hagar's story is in Genesis chapter 16. Hagar was taken from her homeland of Egypt at a young age, probably a young teenager, as a slave in the household of Abraham to serve his wife, Sarah. Sarah's dilemma was that by all normal human standards, she was old beyond childbearing years and had been unable to bear a child with Abraham, who was also aging beyond parenthood years himself. But God had spoken to them by divine messengers, promising that Abraham would have numerous offspring and innumerable descendants one of whom would bless all the nations of the earth. That, of course, would be Jesus Christ. Sarah insisted that Abraham take her slave girl, Hagar, and make her his wife 
to produce a baby and build a family. So they did that. When Hagar quickly conceived by Abraham, she went from being a lowly slave girl to being wife of Abraham and mother of his firstborn. She began looking with contempt upon her one-time slave mistress, Sarah, from the time she was successfully carrying Abraham's child in her womb. Sarah complained to Abraham about this contempt she was feeling from Hagar, even blamed him for being the cause of it. So Abraham released Hagar into Sarah's hands to deal with her former slave girl as she wished. In effect, Hagar went from being a favored slave girl to the young wife, albeit a secondary wife, to the aging Abraham and a young mother, and now back to being a slave girl, but this time with total disfavor and abuse from her mistress, Sarah. Hagar was now suffering so much mistreatment that she ran away. The Lord sent his angel to convey God's plan to Hagar that through her son, her offspring would multiply and be too many to count. But Hagar was told she needed to go back and submit to the abuses of Sarah in Abraham's household. When this angel of the Lord sent Hagar back to Abraham and Sarah with her child, she was no doubt feeling hurt, confused, ashamed, betrayed, cursed, and afraid. But we read this about her in Genesis 16, verses 11 through 14. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Now you have conceived and shall bear a son. You shall call him Ishmael, which means God hears. For the Lord has given heed to your affliction. Then in verse 13, So she named the Lord who spoke to her, You are Elroy, which means God who sees. For she said, Have I really seen God and remained alive after seeing him? Therefore the well was called Be'er Lahiroi, which means the well of the living one who sees. It lies between Kadesh and Barad. We worship the Lord who sees and hears us when we come to him. Know Jesus more in 2024. Love flowing down from the Lord's crown makes me whole, saves my soul, washes whiter than snow. Faithful love calms each fear, reaches down, dries each tear, holds my hand when I can't stand on my own. Faithful love. From above came to earth to show the Father's love. And I'll never be the same, for I've seen faithful love face to face, and Jesus is his name. 
is our friend. Just when hope seems to end, welcome face, sweet embrace, tender touch filled with grace, faithful love, endless power, living flame, spirit's fire. In the night, guiding my way, faithful love from above came to earth to show the Father's love, and I'll never be the same. For I've seen faithful love face to face, and Jesus is his name. For I've seen faithful love face to face, and Jesus is his name. Thank you for being here this morning. John, we really want to thank you for that excellent lesson wherever you are, John. You're right there. Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we're indeed grateful for the time that we've been able to spend here this morning and worship together. We pray, Father, that the time we spent here will not only glorify your name, but provide strength for each one as we enter a new week. We pray, Father, that as it were, your arms of love might encircle each one of us as we go about our week and our work. We pray your special blessing, Father, on Walker again. We pray that you would be with uh, Ed and Diane as they travel, that you would be with all of our number who travel and spend a great deal of time on the road we pray pray for their safety we pray that you would bless each one of us with your comforting hand with your guiding hand as we enter together into a new week we're grateful for all good gifts that you have so generously given to all of us father we're grateful for the fellowship that we can share we pray that you would bless the food that we are about to take uh, to our nourishment and that you would guide us and forgive us of our sins we pray in jesus name Amen. amen and it says that we'll meet at midtown wednesday night we'll actually meet at the building we met at midtown last wednesday So at the building Wednesday night.